So today we see a new topic in regional planning, which is development of modern planning. So in modern planning, we will see various new concepts like global city, what is a global city, what is a garden city, what is a safe city, etc. So these are the modern concepts or modern concepts of regional planning. So next, what is a global city? Because these concepts are quite new in regional planning. These have developed uh, very recently. These concepts have developed very recently. So what is a global city? What do we mean by a global city? Because how can a city be a global unit? Now, global city it refers to what? It is refers to those cities which are very important and they are at the same time quite influential. In, the, in this whole globe, they are quite in, uh, influential. Not only in that those cities are not only influential or important to their nation, but also these are important for the whole world. Maybe a small change in them will uh, result to various changes in the whole world. So that means since they have got the uh, influence over the whole globe, that is why they cover the various dimensions of globalization. Now, what are the various dimensions that we are speaking about? These dimensions can be cultural experiences or business activities, etc. So, what are the various uh, these global cities? So, the global cities are like these are the examples. So, New York, London, Singapore, etc. So, these are the various global cities. What is the characteristic of a global city? Obviously, it should be very important and influential city. Apart from that, it should have a variety of international financial services. Then it must have various headquarters of various multinational corporations. It should have various uh, stock exchange, like for example, the London Stock Exchange. So uh, a, sm a small change in the stock exchange in London will result to various huge changes worldwide. So uh, then these should have major port and container facilities, et cetera. So these are the various characteristics of a global city. So from here you can understand because they are the hub of the financial services. They are the hub of real estate. They are the hub for banking, accounting, marketing, et cetera, or stock exchanges, or they are the headquarters of various multinational companies. So that means that these cities, they yield much power in the uh, around them, surrounding them. So what is the role of a global city? The role of a global city is they have the power to affect global issues and change the global outlook. And how that is done? That is done through a set of various policies, uh, through politics, to military and economics, to controlling the global economy, etc. Now, uh, there is a method how we can rank these cities. There are various cities, as you can see, there are various cities, not only 10, there are more than 10, but uh, there are 10 has been ranked as the top ranked cities. How do we rank them? What is the method of ranking them? The ranking them is done by, by what? By several matrices. Various matrices are used through these matrices, uh, matrix, which is across five dimensions, that is, business activity, human capital, informal exchange, information exchange, cultural experience, and political exchange engagement. So these are the five dimensions. Among these five dimensions, a total of 27 parameters or metrics are chosen. And based upon those, the Global Cities Index was done. And it was done in these years. But since 2015, this 27 metrics has been cut short. So many metrics or so many parameters or indicators are not used. And five dimensions has also been decreased to four dimensions and 13 indicators are used now. So what are the four dimensions? The personal well-being, economics, innovation, and governance. So based upon these four dimensions, 13 indicators are chosen which are based upon these four dimensions and based upon those indicators, the various dimensions in these cities, they are calculated, they are found out and then they are calculated. Indexing is done, weights are given and based upon the weights which 
have, are given, then the top ranked cities according to 2021 are these. So the first ranking cities, as you can see, is New York City, which is followed by London, etc. So this is how the global cities index are done. That means New York City wields much more power than rest of the cities of the world. Next concept is a garden city. Now, this garden city, this was given by Ebenezer Howard. He was the most influential person behind this garden city concept. And this was given in the late 19th century. So, uh, what is this garden city? This model of, this is a, actually urban planning model. So, this was characterized by what various ideas to solve one particular thing, one particular very important thing that is a rural flight or the rural migration. Why rural migration is important? Because this results into disorderly growth of urban areas. Because rural to urban migration is the most important migration, uh, particularly in the low developed countries or the developing countries. So because of lots of rural migration, to the urban areas, this results to various sorts of problems like slum areas, poverty being increasing, unemployment, various urban crimes, etc. So there are various problems, housing problems, because there is a um, rural migration, out migration from rural to urban areas. So to check all these problems, to solve this problem, this model of urban planning was conceptualized. And what is this model? This means that the garden city concept was based on what's creation of several small cities. These small cities like over here, these small cities, this would have the advantages of both the environments. So what are the both environments? So this is a central city. This is the main urban area. And outside of this urban area are the rural areas. Now, in this rural area, the garden city concept was that, that to make small nodes in this, in these outside in the rural areas, to make these small cities. So these small cities would be, there will be transportation accessibility and also infrastructural accessibility with the main city. And at the same time, many pre people prefer to live out from the main city, from the chaos of the main city. So they would enjoy that also, an open area, they would enjoy the open area. And at the same time, being in the open area, they would also enjoy all the infrastructural requirements, all the infrastructural benefits that are found in the main city, because they would be connected directly to the main city. So this was the concept of, and by the, at the same time, by building these small cities, the urban chaos, the overpopulation, the unemployment problem, the housing problem, etc., would also be solved because these areas, these areas would take, uh, would share the housing problem of this particular area. So this was the concept of garden city. So according to Howard, that that is tomorrow a peaceful path to real reform and garden cities of tomorrow. So these were the books that he published. Wherein through these books. He pub, uh, publicized his concept of garden city. So there, what are the principles of garden city? According to garden city, the, uh, this, uh, according to the principles of Howard, Ebenezer Howard, he gave certain principles for the garden city. What were the principles? First was that the cities, that is the satellite cities or the garden cities, would have strong vision. See the word garden. A garden, all of us knows what is the meaning of a garden. So these we don't generally find garden in a city, big gardens in a city. But these cities that would be developed, this would have the concept of garden. That means there it would be it would have an open environment, not that of a congested environment that we find inside a metropolitan city. Now these are the principles. That is, there would be strong vision, leadership, etc. It should uh, the land value capture for the benefit of the community, community ownership of land. So th that means the land would not be owned by a single person, but generally uh, most of the land, majority of the land would be community owned. Mixed tenure homes and housing types that can be affordable for ordinary people, because generally we see in cities the housing scenario is such that uh, generally the ordinary people of the middle class, it is not much affordable for the middle class. 
there would be local jobs also that is economic condition has also been taken care of there would be local jobs also in the garden city and within the community distance etc there would be green space uh, why this green space is important to prevent the unplanned sprawl because urban sprawl and unplanned urban sprawl is one of the main problem of the uh, of the major cities so these are the various principles based on which the garden city concept works next comes the concept of a safe city now we all know what is the meaning of safe so the so safe city is a concept within smart city and just like i was saying previously a city cities these days because of various problems of overpopulation they are no longer safe various kinds of urban crimes have uh, we are hearing about them daily or uh, we have gone through all these crimes also maybe in our personal lives so a safe city is a what does that mean it means the usage of technology how technology can be used in our day to day life to help the government to help the various communities to help business in doing what in reducing the possibility of crime when crime is reduced then obviously people will feel more safe and the environment will be more comfortable so the safe city concept is what how we can use technology to make our surrounding to make our environment to make our day to day life more safe and comfortable so in short it is the use of technology and natural environment to increase our effectiveness in safety so what are the safe city indicators these are the safe city indicators or the parameters which are taken uh, some of of these are taken by the ministry of housing and urban affairs government of india and they have considered three parameters what are the three that, that is the best surveillance low crime rate and better enforcement of law the economic intelligence unit they considers four parameters that is digital security because these days as all of us are aware the digital crime is all, is on the rise or the cyber crime is on the rise so digital security health security infrastructural security and personal security they have taken these four securities into consideration and these are the indicators according to economist intelligence unit and these are the indicators of uh, health ministry of housing and urban affairs so these indicators tells us how much the city a particular city is safe or how much it is unsafe based upon what if obviously if a city has got better surveillance that is there are various cctvs installed in various places of that uh, city that means if a crime is done it will won't go unnoticed if there is uh, low crime rate obviously that city is safe if there is better enforcement of law uh, then obviously like for example if an fir is done and proper action is taken then obviously that city will be safe and similarly if these securities are taken into account then that city will be safe so we can actually calculate how much based upon this parameters what is the rank of the cities based upon these indicators so based upon this the safe city indicators the city is categorized as safe or unsafe if it is safe how much it is safe or it is unsafe what is the percentage or index of it being unsafe so this was all about the modern planning about the concept of garden city safe city and the concept of the global city